I'm happy, I'm blessed to share with you uh, the living word of God, which comes to us life and renewed every day. On behalf of Pastor Bruce, I know maybe he's watching us wherever he is right now. We're doing good, Pastor. <laughs> and those of our members who are watching us from home, we also say, join us together. We're going to praise to our God together. So uh, this morning we had another word that we shared, and we saw that uh, we need strength to keep going. And we saw that we are joyful people, we are blessed people, and we are to share that love with others, with the world, because we are being given the joy and happiness of our life. Because God has called us, he has brought Jesus Christ to us. And so we have that joy, we have something to share with the world. And I want to turn a little bit from that, I'm going to see, okay, we, all those, the world where we're living, and many things, many of us have thought many things, but the question is today, what happens when the things we have been thinking about, the things we want to do, don't go the way we have been thinking? When everything you have been thinking to do, everything you have been thinking, this is my way, has been shuttered down. Where do we head to? Let's pray. Thank you, Jesus, for love. Again, we come before thy presence. And we want to thank you for blessing us this day, for presenting us before us, that God, we can live together and worship you. We thank you for sitting in your house, for sitting in our homes, and for whatever each one of us is, dear God, that you are going to bless us together as we share your word. We thank you that, God, you are love, you are joy, and you have given all that unto us. We thank you for loving us. We thank you for saving us for our purpose. And we want, dear God, to uh, know that purpose even as we walk in this world each and every day. So visit us now and be with us and let us share your word according to your will. Bless us, dear God, for in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. I want to share a word in the book of Second Samuel, uh, chapter 7. It's a whole chapter, 1 to 28, but I want us to see Second Samuel, chapter 7, and I'm going to read from verse 1 to verse 5 for now. Second Samuel chapter 7, verse 1, and I'm going to read up to 5. The word of God says, After the king was settled in his palace, and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, he said to Nathan the prophet, here I am, living in a palace of cinder, while the ark of God remains in a tent. Nathan replied to the king, whatever you have in mind, go ahead and do it, for the Lord is with you. Verse 4, the night the word of the Lord came to Nathan, saying, go and tell my servant David, this is what the Lord says. Are you the one to build me a house to dwell? That's a question that God is asking. And that's what we want to see. All the successful readings that we read each and every day, and even, not even from reading, even our own country, we are told is a country of a dream. Is everything that comes is based on a dream that everybody can be somebody can be successful. So it's based on dream even from the beginning. And even the literature that we read today tells us that for us to head somewhere, we first of all think and come up with the ideas in our mind that this is how I want my life to be. This is where I want to do, uh, this is where I'm going. 
and even from our parents, that's how we are taught, to dream some things that we want to be. So everything is based on uh, uh, some kind of thinking or some kind of dream of how we're going to be. And even great accomplishments came up that way. Some people sat down, and thieves sat down, and they thought something, and they came up to be. And we read all those from many things we are taught, even in school, you can be whatever you want. Those are the things that come up. And these dreams are very good. They motivate us. And even somebody else can look up to us and see somebody else did this and went ahead. And so we keep thinking, okay, what can I do? And we think. So there's that thinking even in our lives, those dreams. And also we see the scriptures also teach us about those dreams. I think of Abraham. He was a dreamer. He dreamed of many things. He was a good man of faith. The whole chapter of the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, we see all those um, apostles and prophets that they had big dreams. Even through, in their faith, they had many things to do. So we see all this. We are taught even in the Bible about that. And so many people we see came up that way. We read history of those people. And many things have been done. Through those many things, people sitting together are doing something. And those history, we have those literature, we have those books everywhere about how to dream. But I had a question. Uh, we can go very far, very far away before you find a reading on what to do when what you have been dreaming about fails. We can not find much details of it. And that's why if the things I'm thinking doesn't come true, what do I do? If the things that we have been taught that if you do this and this, you can be this, and then they don't come true, what do I do? We don't have much of that. And that's what I want us to learn from uh, this servant of God, David, who had those dreams. And here we see he is coming, that David, we see after all fighting all the battles, he fought many battles. And when he fought all those battles, now the Bible says, after the king was settled in his palace, after everything he did, after he won all the battles, and now he came to a study still, and he was in a Paris relaxing. He had all the rest he could now, because all the other days before he was running, he was all in, in battles, he was fighting. Here he is. He is sitting down. He is resting. That's what the Bible tells us, that... He was, he was given a rest from his enemies. So all the, that history before, David was fighting with his enemies. And when he was fighting with enemies, we see that now he has come to rest. Now he has time to think. Now David is sitting in a palace and he has time to think. And that's what he is thinking now, what to do. And we see David here is talking about he had a vision for God. Now because he has been, his life is not busy as it was, David sat down and had a vision for God. So this is David. He has peace. He's in a quiet place. And he's able even to think. And thinking, he comes now, he has a, he's saying, Okay, I had time to rest now, and now I can have a dream. But his concern, big concern we see is that he's dreaming about a place for God. He is saying that here I am living in a Paris. But while the ark of God remains in a tent, remember how the Israelites carried the ark? 
and now they have come to rest. They have won the victories. David is sitting in a Paris made of cedar, but now because he is at rest, he has peace from his enemies. He remembers something. The ark of God is nowhere. It's still out there. He has no place, but he is relaxed in this Paris in a comfortable place. So he is dreaming of a Paris. He is dreaming of the tent of God, a vision. God gives him a vision. And he's thinking what to do. And now he goes and then he has his friend. It was great. David spent almost of his nights in caves. Before that, he was in caves. He couldn't find a place to sleep. Now he is in the Paris. And now he sees how the Paris looks wonderful. How the palace looks big, but he remembered the Ark of the Covenant, which he had brought back from Jerusalem. And now he says, I am going to build a house for God. That David's dream, to build a house for God. Because now he looks at himself, he is at rest, the tent has no place, and here he is. It's not good. I am going to build a tent, a, a, a house for God. Now the problem that David saw was big. Because he brought the Ark of the Covenant from Jerusalem, and this took a lot of stuff. And we can read all that in the first book of Chronicles, chapter 16, how all the Ark came back. And we discover that time, uh, the the priests were appointed, and they had to carry the Ark of the Covenant all the way. But now, because David is not out there, the Covenant is out there, he is in the palace. What do I do? So the Revites are here, but they cannot be able to take care of the Covenant. And we see that David, what he's doing, he has, they had appointed all these people, we see like 24,000 men, there were musicians to surround the ark and to make sure it's okay. But David is not comfortable. So the ark of the covenant came to Jerusalem and there was an awful lot of that happened to it. And David was not happy because this is what they were fighting for. They wanted to be with it, but now it is nowhere. And he asked the house, how can I live in such a place while the ark of the covenant is out there? So we see the context of the dream that he is at peace, he is at rest, and now he won't appraise. But now watch even what he did. David while in the Paris, in verse 3, we see he is with the servant of God, Nathan. And Nathan, when David went and told Nathan, he said in verse 3, Nathan replied to king, whatever you have in mind, go ahead and do it. <laughs> David has dreamt. He wants to do something. And his dream is confirmed by the prophet of God, Nathan. And he was told, go and do it. So it was confirmed. It was right for God to be done. Nathan was okay with it doing, building a house for that, uh, that tenant. And then here we see that. What follows next? After arrest? After Nathan confirmed? God talked to Nathan that night and asked, are you the one to build me a house to dwell? And he told him, go and tell David, are you the one to build? So David is here. And we see a trust. So that's why we're looking even at today's world. We cannot have a vision for God. Because the world is chaotic. We, cannot be, we don't have the rest like the David had. And so sometimes even Christians today, we lack the vision to look ahead and to see what can we do for God. And that's why we, the world is going to continue to be chaotic because we have never come to rest, even the rest that God wants us to be. We're still at war with our own selves, and even with the world, we cannot have a dream for God, 
Because the context of these visions is having peace, is having the rest, and even our dreams being confirmed. So we see David here, the occasion he gets is to dream. Verse 3, David listens and talks. And when he talks, this is where we come and say, everybody today to have all these occasions, we need a Nathan in our lives. We need a Nathan in our lives who can even confirm and help us go ahead with the visions of God that we fight. But where do we find Nathans? Most of the people we're going to fight today is people to discourage you, is people to let you down, is people to tell you that not, that one cannot happen. It cannot be done. You can mount to nothing instead of having Nathans. Today we need Nathans who can comfort each one of us. Even at our homes, even at our working places, even outside there, we need a Nathan who can tell you, okay, this is how it is. But take courage. It can be done. It is right with God. David had a Nathan, and everybody, we need a Nathan. But the most dangerous people we have today is the people who, can tell, who tell us it cannot be done. And that's where we are today. We have most people telling it cannot be done. Do you want to go to church today? No, we can go to church today. Do you want to worship today? No, it can be done today. Those are the people we have. While we need Nathans in our life, and those are the most dangerous people we have. And then we see that. We see people who tell it can never happen. Those dangerous people. But I want to go ahead with the vision of, of, of David. And so we see that. God has blessed some people. God has blessed some, many churches. And it has become many places to be worshipped. And God has been praised for that. Because there are people who are there to support one another. And so God raised Nathan as somebody who will encourage to do all that. And so David here is very much encouraged. Having peace, having concern, and having confirmation. So if we stop there, we can see as if we're heading somewhere. We can see, yeah, now David is heading somewhere. And what we believe is we'll see David next time preparing everything to build the, the house for the, ten, for, the, for the covenant. But that's not what we fight. We don't fight that. The question we fight is, are you the one to build the house for God. The word of the Lord came unto Nathan and he said, let me share with you the conversation that Nathan has with God. And that we see in the book of First Chronicles 17, 1 to 6. We find the whole story of the conversation that God had with Nathan. David wants to build a house and he's excited about it. He's so happy. He's so out there to build the house. And it seems right because it has confirmed. But David had another talk with God and he said, no way, you are not going to do it. In verse 4, all the way down to 17, we see David talking with God and God is telling him, no, you're not going to do it. What happens when you are told no? What happens when you set your life in line? What happens when you are so excited of how your life is going to be? And then you have somebody who says no. And even don't tell you the reason why you will not build it. So today I'm telling you, I'm going to tell you what to do when your dreams are broken. What to do when your life is shattered? What to do when you're told what you want to do when you know it's very well, nothing wrong with it, you cannot do it. So here there are so many people today, so many people today, that their lives have been shattered. That their lives have come to a standstill 
that even we don't know where to head to because it has been stopped. And maybe you have a dream, many dreams to do, or even you had a dream yourself. You wanted to do something very well, but you can't do it. Maybe at your home, maybe at your business, even maybe in the church, but it came to be told no. Many things happen. You have done something so nice, so good, and then everything has come to, to, to a standstill. So what to do when your, brothers, when your dreams are broken? First thing, we're going to see what David did, and then we're going to see in verse, the one that says verse from four down, where David is talking. Or let me go to verse 18. I want to jump a little because the first one is the conversation that David had uh, with God. But I want to go, David, we see himself that when he was told no and that he would not work, David went down and sat down. And what I want to tell you to do, what to do when your dreams are shattered? Reveal what you have without the dream. Reveal what you have without the dream. Keep the dream away. And then think, before the dream, what did I have? Did I have anything before the dream? Was God there before my dream? Did I have any blessings before the dream? Was my life on before the dream? Leave you all that. And that's what we see David sitting down. And he's, he is reviewing what he had. We get something in our sight that we are going to do. And we cannot do that. And so what David did, he decided that he wanted to build a house. And nothing confirmed. We have seen that. And then we see, Lord, he said no to David. And now David sat down. He discovered that this God, who, told, who is telling me no today, even the day before he had carried me through all the battles, he took me through all the battles and he brought me to this Paris. And now this is God. He is telling me no. So we discover that David begins to rejoice that God has honored him among all the nations, all the kings, that he has honored him and he begins to rejoice that God has set before him a future. David didn't sit down and say no and uh, say that his life is gone or it's finished. He rejoiced. David said, I will not let you build a house for me, but I will build a spiritual house for you. And David came to recognize that. That's what God told David. You will not build that physical house you want to build for me. I am the one who is going to build a spiritual life for you. David recognized that and he started rejoicing. But he said, I want to tell you something. If God has said no, no, there is much left. There's much left in your life if your dreams come to an end. There is much left in your life that you can follow. You can sit down and calculate one by one. Yes, God, you have said no. This is what I had before the dream. Can I invest my life in that? Can my life continue with that before the dream? Or does my life go and settle on the dream that I had? And it has come to know. V review your life. Review what you had. Maybe God has done many things in your life. And this is the time that we are going through the world. We have seen many things. Your job has been touched. Your family has been touched. Your children have been touched with all those things. What do you do? Review what you had before the dream. And when you see God saying sometimes no, he doesn't know, say no for nothing. He says no because he wants his glory to go back to him. So review what you had before that dream. See what you had before that dream. 
The second thing that we see David doing, when your dreams are broken, resolve to keep dreaming. Don't let your dreams end there. Resolve to keep dreaming because God has many ways to keep your life going. God has many ways for you to serve him. God has many ways to keep your life going and to keep you uplifted and keep going. Do you know what, David, do you know what we do if we dream and our dreams are deserted? We say, that is all for God. We give up. We tell God, I cannot keep doing this. I asked you for this. You say, no. I wanted to do this. You say, no. That's it. And we have seen many people even getting out of the way of the Lord. We have seen many people even giving up with God because God has said no. And what happens? He gets out of God's will. And then the devil takes the chance to use somebody who has been in the will of God. Resolve to keep dreaming because God has a way. So in this chapter... We see that Solomon now comes in is addressing the people after the temple had already been built. And now the project uh, in the second Chronicles 6, 7, 9. We see now God says, no, you're not going to build. And in the passage, God says, I'll raise somebody from your family to build the house for me. That's what the God says now that if you continue reading, it says God is going to raise somebody or in your family, who going to build? And it was very strange that God is saying, somebody from David's family is the one who is going to do it. And so in Second Chronicles 6, 7, and 9, can you put that for, verse for me? Second Chronicles 6, 7, and 9. Some people say that David had a dream, and God said no, that David was wrong, but God had something for David. So the context here is that this chapter is that Solomon is blessing the people after the temple had already been built. David did not get to do it. His son Solomon did it, and he is the one talking to the Lord. Okay, let me see that. Second Chronicles 6, 7, and 9, we see that in the life of David. So watch what God said to David. He said, I like your desire. That's what God saying. In 2 Chronicles 6, 7, we say, Now it was in the heart of my father David to build a house for the name of the Lord, the God of Israel. But the Lord said to my father David, Because it was in your heart to build a house for my name, you did well that it was in your heart. That's God talking to David. And he says that, yeah, everything was fine, not bad. Everything was okay. It was your desire. But says, nevertheless, you shall not build the house, but your son, who will be born to you, he shall build the house for my name. That is something that can be discouraging. Because David is ready to build it. But God is telling me, no, never that you're not. But your son, who will be born, is the one to come and do it. That was something to make David discouraged. That was something to put David out. Because he was ready. He had everything to do it. But God said no. So, he said, it's nothing wrong with you. But still has all the things to say no. We cannot question God why. So if your dreams that you had set in your heart to do doesn't mean to quit, it means keep on doing what God wants to do. Resolve to keep your dreams on for God. Don't let them be shut down. Whatever God does and gives, don't let them be gone. And so we see that the last thing, when your dreams are broken, Reject questioning yourself. Reject digging in your life. Reject seeing all the wrongs you have done. But see 
what God wants to you. When your dreams are broken, reject questioning yourself. When things happen in our life, and what we do is, what did I do wrong? What happened? And then you start looking to somebody else. We started with this one. He has gone ahead, but my life is stopped. What did I do? And we question ourselves too much. Even when God says no, we question ourselves. We put ourselves in a dilemma that we cannot be able to quit. And many we get, we feel guilty of the things because we had desire, we wanted to, all those things come up. And then we started digging in ourselves, deep, deep in ourselves, we start going deep. And even calm things, even that are not necessary even to come out. So what we do is, many people quit. God says no, and there is no observable reason. We start messing up our lives. So it was not God's time to tell David why he is not going to do it. But we see in First Chronicles 22, 6 and 10. Put, put me verse 6 of First Chronicles 22, 6 and 10. We see that now... After all this, David did all that. I told David what to do, and you are not. Now he comes up. After almost everything is done, even almost after every temple was built, he comes and tells you, David, what, why he was not able to tell let him to build the temple. And he said in First Chronicles 22, 6, Then he called for his son Solomon, and he charged him to build a house for the Lord God of Israel. David said to Solomon, my son, I had intended to build a house to the name of the Lord my God. But the word of the Lord came to me saying, you have shed much blood and have waged great wars. You shall not build a house to my name because you have shed so much blood on the earth before me. This is God now explaining to David why he couldn't build the temple. The temple is already done. And now he comes back and tells him, what if David had given up on God? What if David had said, now that's enough, God? What if David had given out his life to the things that we people, we give ourselves today because something has gone wrong? God would not have a chance. David could have been gone somewhere. But David, we see, he sat down, he rejoiced, he praised God for what he had, he reviewed what he had before the dream, and then he resolved to keep going on, and then he is here now even saying that he's not digging himself. He's giving himself to God, and God is giving him the reason why he couldn't do it. So, we see here, most important thing we need to do, the problem is that we give up. The problem is we yield to the devil. The problem is we give away and then God has no place to bless us. And that's what it we have today. People, the world, people have re refused to go back and see what we have after everything is gone. People have refused to look back and see this is God is still there. God has not changed. God has not gone anywhere. He's still God. He's still sitting on the throne. God still can bless us and still God, God can keep us. So what do we see when our bro dreams are broken? Review what you have without the dream. Resolve to keep dreaming. Receive, resolve to not to question yourself. And then the last important thing we see from, from the David. When our dreams are shattered, when our dreams are broken, please redirect your energies to something else. Redirect our energies to something else that can glorify God. Because we can glorify God in our life, whatever circumstance we are in, and wherever we are. He is the, great, is the greatest instrument we have in David. So please put for me 1 Samuel 7, 12 to 14. Let's see what David did. After all this happened and God explained everything, let's see what David did himself because 
Here he is. And let's see what David himself said because everything came. First Samuel 7, 12 to 14. Start with 12. <laughs> then Samuel took a stone and set it between Mizpah and Shen and named it Ebenezer, saying, Thus far the Lord has helped us. So the Philistines were subdued, and they did not come any more within the border of Israel, and the heart of the Lord was against the Philistines of the days of Samuel. The cities, the, okay, the cities which the Philistines had taken from Israel were restored, and Israel from Ekron to Gath had Israel delivered their territory from the heart of the Israelites, so there was peace between Israel and the Amorites. I think that's one, the one, yeah. Okay, the one I wanted first is First Chronicles 29, please. First Chronicles 29, verse 1. We see the great insight of the man. So David was told someone will build. Uh, and he said, because God has said this, I will live the rest of my life with one goal. So I'm saying we direct your energies to something else that God will be praised. He said that I will set my goal of life in might, and that is to help Solomon experience the dream that I wanted. That's what it says in 1 Chronicles 29 verse 1. Then King David said to the entire assembly, My son Solomon, whom alone God has chosen, is still young and inexperienced, and the work is great, for the temple is not for men, but for who? For the Lord God. The work that God has given us is not for men, it's for him. And so that's why if your dreams are shattered, whatever you are praising God, Redirect your energies to something else. That God can redirect your energies to something else. So David said, I'll rest my life. Solomon is young. I had dedicated my life to do this job. And now I'll set my life. I'll help Solomon do it. So David, if you read the book of First Chronicles, you see that David set everything together. Even if when God said no, so David still did the work. He brought all the materials. He brought everything that the temple needed to be built. And this is what David is saying to us today. He is saying, I cannot build the house of God, but I can help somebody to do what a testimony is this. God has said to you, no to you, to something to you. You wanted to be in the mission or something, you wanted to do something for God. And God said, no. You have devoted your life to doing that job. You have devoted your life to do something. Lead direct that energy to something else. Maybe you can help somebody else who is ready to do it. You can help somebody else with God is saying, yes, you can do it. And we can see that even in our church, we can have here. God has given us all energies. Let us redirect our energies to building the work of God. Whatever God has given us, even if I say no to that, I can still be there with somebody else who had God say, do it. Maybe you are there for mission. You can go mission. Help somebody else who is, there, who is going. You can support somebody else who is there. Maybe you can do it. Your child can do that. Support your child to do what you couldn't do because all your energies were set there. David is saying, I cannot build the house of God. I have been told by God not to do so. I am going to help somebody else to do it. I am going to help my son do it. We are in a world where it looks like everybody is for himself. You fight your own battles, I fight my own battles. Even if I am 10 steps ahead and behind you, I don't care. That's where we are today. It's like you fight only battles. But God is saying, redirect your energies 
that can be supporting somebody else, that can help somebody else, and still his name will be glorified because God is there. When your dream is broken, do not sit at home. When your dreams are broken, do not quit. When your dreams are broken, do not forget what God has for you, but give you a new vision and new desire a new energy, a new motivation to do what the work of God that still needs to be done. That's what God is saying, even to David. And David is becoming the example of a life that we can do that, redirect your energy. If God say no, then your vision needs not to die. Your vision needs to keep going on. And that's why we say, we say in the morning, God gives strength for each and every day because we can keep going. It doesn't matter wherever we are. It doesn't matter where we are. It doesn't matter what the world look like. The thing is, is God there for us? Did we have anything? Even before the COVID-19, did we have anything that we can praise God for? Can we, can we review that? Can we review that what we had even before all this happened or even all this chaos happened? Even before I lost my job, is there anything that God had given me? Do, have that, do all that happening have to stop me from praising God? Do all that have to stop me from serving the Almighty God? David is saying, no, it has not. It's about time to sit down and review what we had before our dreams, and even sit down and last and not question ourselves that we have done long. There are so many versions of things out there that God is punishing us. We have done something terrible to God. It's not our time to question that. It's our time to review what we had. It's our time to praise God Sit there and tell God, thank you for where we are. God, we praise you wherever we are. Because God, nothing takes you by surprise. He knows. He knows what we're going through. He knows what the world is going through. He knows all the sufferings. He knows all the pains. So why do we abandon him? Why do we leave God? Our vision doesn't need to be remain unfulfilled. It needs to keep going on. Let us not resolve to keep serving God even in the midst of everything. And then when we do that, if we still have that energy in us, let us be there for somebody else and support each other. Because that's what God wants us to do. God can say no, we cannot question him. God can do anything, we cannot question him. Let us be there for one another. We said he gives us strength. He supports us. He protects us. We are joy. Let us give that even to the world because that's what God says. So David did everything because he saw the face of God. He looked unto God. He didn't give up. He didn't say now, God is saying no. I have everything. I have money. I have all the riches. He didn't say that. He sat down and thanked God. He knelt before God. He went through all the history he had, all the praises he had received, all the honors, and he said, yes, you are God. And because you have done this, and you say, no, my son is still young, I can do something. He got behind him. All the materials you read, the temple was built by what David contributed. It was done. The house of God can be built by what you have given. The work of God can be done by what you have given because you have resolved to keep on with the work of God. And this is the time that we need to keep going on, not forgetting that God is with us in our sufferings. God is still God sitting on the throne. He has not changed. He has not. We have changed. But God has not. 
and it's high time that says, yes, I'm not going to sit at home. I'm not going to now find a reason to uh, be wherever I want to be because I can choose not to come to church on Sunday or be somewhere else. But let us resolve to still continue with God. If God has said no to your dream, you can make it possible for someone else. You can make it possible to keep your vision fulfilled because God is there. So what do we do when our dreams are shattered? Let us go back to where God to what God has done for our lives. Let us go back and see God has done much in our lives. We can go back and look at it. We can review our history. Look at it. What God has done. He has done many things. Then we sit down and praise God for that. And God intervenes our lives because we remember him. Because we don't give the devil a praise in our lives because of what God has done. Let us reveal what has God has done. Let us walk back and then let us not dig ourselves. Let us not blame ourselves but sit down and praise God. Then resolve to keep going on. Purpose to keep going on. And lastly, start with somebody else and be a supporter. Be a joy to your friend, to your neighbor, to everybody. And then God blesses our lives. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Again, our dear God, we so thankful for the many things that God you prepare for your people. We thank you for the life of David that God even when he desired, when he expected, he was, he, when he was ready even to build a temple for you because he was not satisfied looking at you, your temple and he was sitting in a at Paris, and God, he decided, and he decided in his heart to build a temple for you. And even God, when he was getting ready to do so, you sent you a message, and you say no. And God, it can be heartbreaking, but you are still God. And today, dear God, we pray because we have so many of us who our hearts are heartbroken, our lives are heartbroken, our relationships are heartbroken, but God, you are still God, and we can praise you for our lives, even in the midst of everything. I God, we gather here together to say, give us that strength, give us that energy to worship you and praise you because of the many things that you have done in our lives. And when we look back, dear God, we give you our thanks. God, you still stand with us and protect us. And when we still continue to worship you and give you glory, dear God, the devil has no reason to intervene in our lives. All what we have, dear God, is to purpose in our lives, to be the children you have chosen us to be. So I pray for encouragement among your people. I pray for hope among us, dear God. I pray for the many heartbroken hearts that God, you will do your will. We have many physically sick. We have so many, dear God, spiritually sick, but you are still God. Nothing has taken you by surprise. We pray for peace. We pray for strength. We pray for spiritual prifting as you promised David. He may not build the physical house, but you build his spiritual life. So build us, dear God, even as we continue. Bless every member of the church, even those sitting and looking at us at home. We pray for the other many gatherings in the world, worshiping your holy name, that your name will be glorified. And dear God, help us to overcome all the shortcomings that we have. We praise you and we honor you, even as we purpose in our lives 
to continue serving you and to continue supporting one another. We pray knowing that you are with us and you're going to help us. Dear God, you're going to guide us. Even as we disperse in our various places, even as we uh, look ahead in the coming days, that God will be with, with one, uh, each one of us and you uh, lift us from our heart bro broken uh, uh, places and you're going to sit us on the throne high places so we can rejoice. We pray knowing that you have heard us and you know us. In the mighty name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen. Thank you, and God bless you. Amen. Thank you, brother. <laughs>